Well, hello. Hello. It's time with science. Happy Monday. Monday. Hmm. Can you believe it? Hopefully I have Wi-Fi and I'm on Facebook and all is working and not glitching. So we're here for our Monday science class today. And I hopefully have uh, a good project. I hopefully, ooh, I think I see somebody on. I think I finally see someone. Good, good, good. Good morning, Katie. I think you might guys, you, you guys might like this. I uh, don't always give you the materials because I have to see how the weather is and I like to do it as a surprise and then you watch it and then you kind of put it together on your own. All right, hopefully. Hey, Christian, what's up? I know, I, I know the governor's talking. I think he's gonna give us some ideas on when we might be returning, slowly going back to a little bit of the way things are, a little less restrictive, so I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, sometime in May. Yeah, I think, I like that. I like the word you use, blueprint, blueprint. And if anybody's having a hard time, I'm doing dishes in my dishwasher, so let me know, let me know. Um, but yeah, yeah, hopefully he'll be giving us some um, good plans and some good guidelines, because I have a feeling we're all a little bored. This is actually, if I'm counting correctly, our seventh week. Uh, I think, so Cuomo said May, I think, um, probably, I think sometime in May you're going to start to see some restrictions lift, because I know in New Jersey hospital admissions went down or flattened out a bit, so let's, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, what, how this all happens, we don't know yet, we don't know, so we're just going to take our time, we're going to play it safe. And uh, if we play it safe, then we have a better job for all of us staying healthy. All righty? So, but good, yeah. Christian, you're my, you're my man to go to for my updates. My husband was watching the NFL draft, too, probably along with you. Good morning, Katie. Yes, Oreo is here with me. He misses you. He misses you very much. Uh, he might have to go to your house. Um, when this is over, you might have to be first on the list. That might start some infighting. I don't know. Uh, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. That's what Christian says about all this. I agree. I agree. Let's. I mean, listen. We've we've proven we're pretty tough. This is this was really weird. Um, hello, hello, Terrence and family. Welcome, welcome. Um, my house is pretty old. My house is, um, like the main part of it, it makes it sound like it's big, it's not a big house, but the main part of the house was built, um, supposedly, in 1907. Good morning, Kara. Good morning. I know my house, Kara, I think you have an old house, too. Probably, in, uh, not probably, I know, in much better condition than mine. Um, so my house has seen a lot of things. Um, it's seen two world wars, um many recessions and now it's seen like this weird corona quarantine it's unbelievable unbelievable as a matter of fact this weekend i was out working on my my chicken coop some of you know you're like what deborah do you keep chickens no i don't keep chickens it's been converted to a i guess you'd call it a she shed it's like a shed it's like a porch so i was working on that and i was working on my garden which inspires today's project. Good morning, Jamie. Wow, everybody is up, uh, up and ready for the week. I think this is week seven. Your schedules have been emailed. I usually, um, this, actually this week was pretty good. The other centers were better than me. Uh, they had gotten their, um, their schedules, I think, emailed out to everybody really early. I like to hold off a little bit, uh, because I'm also lazy. Um, to make sure I know what exactly what I'm doing and if there's any last minute uh, changes. Um, and I did, I had a typo because I rushed too fast. So something new this week, we're gonna do um, at 1.30, Monday, today, and Thursday. It's gonna be a little bit of a different class. I think we're gonna have a special guest joining me, if he cooperates, um, for, um, kind of more of a shorter, kind of low-key type of class. Maybe we're just 
kind of just interacting with each other. Uh, just for people who, you know, maybe find this kind of uh, method of, of instruction a little, a little tough, a little tough. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Something a little bit shorter, something a little bit different. Um, yeah. So anybody's welcome to join us, but definitely some of the people that have, you know, maybe a little bit antsy or um, maybe science or the, our, our Thursday feelings check-in is a little bit too much, too overwhelming. I've got that too. So we're going to be starting that today. We're going to see how that goes. But welcome, welcome to science. I'm Deborah. Uh, the rest of the schedule, hangout room. I've been, yeah, Katie, you've been in my coop. You've been in my chicken coop. You have. You are always welcome. Always welcome to my chicken coop. It looks a little bit better. I think it looks, well, maybe about the same. I don't know. It looks better. I think I've, I've, I've worked on it. I was restringing lights. So we're here for science. And uh, I know a lot of people have started gardening and things like that. We've started some gardening projects. Uh, I've got some groovy plants over here. Uh, that I've got that I'm trying to replant, some stuff I dug up, one's a celery head. If we got time, I'll show it to you. But um, today, we're still, we're going to be focused on um, a different creature. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. Hence, uh, the key or the, cue, the clue is in my mug. It's not about chickens per se, they are a group in general. We're going to be talking about birds and bird watching. And we're going to do some bird watching or bird feeder, feeders activities with maybe some things you have around the house. Alrighty? So, you know, you say, hey, Deborah, what's the big deal? Science seems pretty boring. Like, what do I get out of this? Well, you get a lot of stuff out of it. Science is great. It's great for your brain. It's great for creative thinking. Um, so I like, I like to keep it in the schedule. I like to keep it in the schedule. It also really helps us with, you know, with building our job skills and stuff like that. Following um, directions, thinking outside the box. Um, it helps us work on uh, today's project a little bit on fine motor skills. That's like working your fingers and stuff. So if some people have difficulty, maybe you can team up with somebody else in your family. I know some people have family visiting. It's a great family project for you guys to do during the day, both of them. Uh, it's good for really learning and thinking about identifying things and classifying things. That's important. That's important uh, for work, for life. And, um, it's good on these building research skills. Uh-huh. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And, um, also building interests. That's really important. And I think some of you might've found out that what made this difficult, some of us have lots of interests and they, they can fancy word. They generalize to home meaning we can take our interests and we can do them wherever we can and that really helps us stay calm and regulate and entertain ourselves and some people have a really hard time maybe their interests are very job related maybe you work you know in ShopRite and right now that's not happening or you're working at a particular you're working at a restaurant and you can't do that so now you don't know what to do with yourself so it's really important to build interests so we can stay calm, we can stay optimistic and positive, and you know, be busy. It's important to be busy. So today, I've got some stuff. I, I'm in a different spot in my kitchen. I'm at my little table, which is really working well because I can't see because I see the comments, but I think you can see my hands, which is awesome. So if you have your nature journal, you might want to refer it for that, refer to it today alrighty um, you know we were talking about this last time a great notebook to keep track of your experiments maybe when you're going out on your nature walks you find things and make comments drawing and today we've got a little something to put in we're going to talk a little bit about bird watching and identifying birds alrighty so all these skills help us in the long run, help us develop as a person. So that's why I dig it. That's why I dig science. Science covers lots of bases. And if you're a person that likes kind of like arts and crafts, 
it also works well with that because if you like cooking it works with that if you like birds it works with that so today we've got a little bit of everybody um so once again i'm deborah it's science it's monday the 27th get out your nature journal as i was just showing i love this one i found this dandelion and i was drawing some pictures yeah so he's in my book forever poor little flower so here we go so we were talking about bird watching and uh, i don't know if anybody's ever done it bird watching and if anybody here so if you've done bird watching let me know give me a shout out also if you have bird feeders outside or if you've ever made bird feeders uh let me know i'm curious um if you have them outside your house i have them right in the front of my house um, by my front window it's like a big tv screen um yeah jamie feeds the birds until the bears come out yeah you guys are a little up there hold on one second i've got a noisy friend hey cooper can you just keep it down thanks man uh, you know, our, 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 our recording areas are kind of meshing. So yeah, you guys got to be careful out there. Uh, some people, yeah, they like those bird feeders. We sometimes get deer, the, the squirrels and the chipmunks really do a number on our bird feeders, but they're awesome. Um, and they help bring birds to your yard. And it's really important that if you start to do that and start to feed birds, um, you may want to really make a practice of it of doing it we regularly had a, we had a woodpecker i'm on we had a woodpecker come on in come on in we had a woodpecker woodpeckers like to peck your house it's annoying when they it is they make a lot of noise you cannot kill a woodpecker why it is against the law they're a protected species Kara yeah, has hummingbird feeders i don't Whoa. i don't have luck with those so i'd be curious when we get back to the center i want to hear all about it uh and you just threw some seed outside terrence threw it you can throw some seed outside so some of the stuff we can do you can work on all of this so that's good so we've got some cool uh people that feed their birds um it does attract other animals sometimes so you do have to be careful it can be a little messy. Sometimes it attracts the wrong kind of birds. Uh, overall, we've been pretty lucky. So on your Facebook page, and I'm going to put this up on Google Classroom too. I'm pretty sure. That's what I'm going to do for the week, uh, my lesson. So if you go in, you're going, uh, if you scroll down, hold on. Cooper, I need you to be quiet, okay, man? Thanks. There's a squirrel and a chipmunk. Oh, and oh the no. Squirrels and chipmunks. Simon, maybe you can help Cooper stay calm, but at 1045, you have your Google Classroom. Sorry, guys. So these are non reverse and rehearsed. Um, so if you go to our Facebook page, scroll down. Today's daily task is a printout. Um, I forget which organization. Uh, hummingbirds come the first week of May. So the feeders go out now. Thank you, Kara. Thank you for sharing that. Um, cause they, have, they, they like that sugar water, right? Or do that, right? There's so, like, there's special something about their, um, their, their bird feeders. And it depends on what kind of feed certain, certain seeds attract certain birds too. And there's all different kinds of birds. I would love to, maybe when this is all said and done, uh, it's a little challenging. I don't think it's completely accessible. Uh, but I'm trying to work it out. There's a gentleman um, that owns a store uh, by us in Paramus, uh, Wild Birds Unlimited, something like that. Um, and it's a cool store um, when it opens. Go check it out. And I'd like, I'd like us to learn a little bit about it because this is a great hobby. This is a great hobby. We should be using this time to build hobbies um, because that will make our lives more well-rounded. So it's important. It's important hobbies. And this is an easy one. It doesn't cost you much. I mean, there's a couple of things that you need for uh, bird watching. You might need binoculars, maybe. Uh, maybe a camera or your phone. Nowadays, nobody really carries a camera. Um, a bird identification uh, uh, guide. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. Um, and I have one here that you can print out. This is a great checklist. This is all stuff that you could actually see right around our house. Uh, right, right around our area. 
Um, which is cool because sometimes you'll open these up and it'll be like crazy birds you've never seen. Uh, you love feeding the birds. Yeah, right? Steven's family loves, loves doing that. Loves doing that. I do too. I enjoy it. It's, it's lots of fun. And you see them and they're so cute. They're so cute. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but if you go on or if you don't, can't find it, it'll be up on Google Classroom, I think by the end of the day, um, where you can print this out or you can check it out or at least get to the site to see which birds. And uh, you don't get a prize necessarily. <laughs> you get my utmost respect if you can really tick them all off, if you can check them all off. But you should be able to see all of these. Uh, tuned in late. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about that. So Stephen's family was just talking about it. I was just saying that w I need to plan a trip to that store when we reopen. I've been, it's something I've wanted to do, or maybe they'd come and see us. They're very knowledgeable on 17 Wild Birds Unlimited. Thank you, confirming the name. Great store, great store. Uh, you can get every kind of bird feeder and thing like that that you could imagine. Um, so yeah, the National Wildlife Federation, you can go on their website and you can get like certified your house or your location as a wildlife habitat. Maybe we could do it for our center. I've done it for my house and it's a lot of fun. Hey, David, what's up, man? We got the two Daves on. David, good to see you, man. We're doing science. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and I think you might like this because you probably do this when you're out, um, walking Charlie. You're probably checking out, maybe Charlie is, the squirrels and the birds. So definitely you can bring this checklist with you on your walks and check them off. All righty. So today it's all about birds. Bird watching, uh, bird making um, some bird feeders with things that you have around the house. I'm not going to use the soda bottle one. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something a little different. Um... It might it might work, it might not. We're gonna we're gonna have to find out. But these would be also things that you might have around your house. Up oh, Gertie's upset, she wants to come up, she looks out my windows. Uh bird feeders are great for your cats, um, because they like to look out the window. It's also torturous, maybe. Maybe, uh, to have them look at the uh bird feeders. So um, you're going to do a combined effort today. This is a lot of things coming together, working on a lot of skills. So your research element is, um, I've done a little research on what birds can eat, what you can include in making bird seed for these crafts. So that's something you can do. You can also, when this all opens up a little bit, like Christian and I are hoping, you can go to your local library and you can look for some books that have lots of cool pictures. I don't like to read lots of lots of stuff all the time. I just like to look at um, all the pictures, right? All the pictures. And I don't know if anybody here has read a uh, pretty fancy uh, old book, Silent Spring, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. I've been to the Rachel Carson Wildlife Center in Maine. If you're ever up that way, it's beautiful. But we need to protect our birds. We need to make sure that um, our, our world around us is safe for all animals. And sometimes what we use as humans in terms of chemicals and how we build can interrupt the lives um, of birds. And when I was growing up, there was a lot more birds. I don't know if it's increased. I have nothing to back that up. But... I could have sworn. I could have sworn. But I love birds. They're all around us. They're totally awesome. Most of them are super duper cute. Some of us may have birds for pets, which is different, which is different. Those Usually those pets, uh, like parrots and stuff, aren't what we call indigenous. They're not native to our area, um, but they're cool too. So love birds, love birds. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't want to fly. I'm afraid of heights. But when you're um, watching this, chime in. Tell me the birds around your neighborhood, all right? The little ones and the big ones. We got some big ones. Uh, turkeys are an amazing comeback story. Um, they're kind of nasty, but they're an amazing comeback story. Um, they were almost extinct um, in New Jersey. They were, you didn't see them. Now they're like everywhere. Um, so talk about it. Tell me your favorite bird. So let us begin. So your research, maybe look for some books. We'll talk maybe if we've got time a little bit about that. You're going to go to either Google Classroom later on uh, today or you can go to Facebook. 
Uh, it should be easy to find. You're going to print out your bird checklist. And now you're going to work on uh, learning how to make uh, two different types of bird feeders. The first one we're going to do, uh, I think, is the more simple one. Okay? And what you need for this, and I will put these things up on Google Classroom, you're going to need yarn or string of some sort, um, a scissor. Um, it's very helpful if you have a needle, okay? So this is where this fine motor, cardinals, blue jays, titmouse, woodpeckers, nuthatch, chickadee, and finches, you got a lot. My, I love cardinals. I love cardinals. I really do. I really do. They're all, those are all awesome. I saw some tufted titmouses at my bird feeder yesterday. So cute. Just want to squeeze them. But you shouldn't because they're very delicate. Uh, and sparrows. There's all different kinds of sparrows. And goldfinches. I hit goldfinches as well. So you're going to need some type of yarn or um, needle. I have like a big kind of needle here. You could use any, uh, Stacy's got a lot of birds that come too. You can use any type of um, needle as long if, it's, if you use thread or something. And this is where you might need help from um, family members because um, it's a little hard. It's a little hard. I, I have a lot of crafting supplies, so I have a pretty big um, needle. Um, you could use plastic ones. You could poke a hole with maybe um, like a like a very fine screwdriver too and then thread the, the yarn through or, or the string. But if you do have these things, ask, ask mom or grandma or I guess grandpa or dad. Uh, you might have them yourself. See if you've got any of these things because this is what we call garland. This is a, a fun one to do and you can do this around the winter holidays. Some people do this on uh, trees and leave them in the forest for animals to eat because um, in the winter, food is much more scarce. So we wanna make sure that, we were starting to talk about this, that if we do feed birds, we wanna make this like a year long activity because that's when um, they really need it in the winter when there's food that's less scarce because a lot of them are still around. Yeah, those woodpeckers, they picked the worst time. I had just, they were um, eating the side of my house. Poke, poking holes are very, very specific, uh, very orderly. Um, so once I got signing, it didn't, I didn't have a problem, but don't kill them. Don't kill them. You get in trouble. So you're going to get some yarn and the amount is up to you. If you want to make it just like little strings to hang, you can only, you could do it about like a foot or a foot and a half. If you want to lay it from branch to branch, um, you can make it about, you know, you can make it as long as you want. I'm going to make it about a couple of feet. Okay. At one end. So I just cut it. And at one end, as you can see, I'm going to make a loopy loop, okay? So what I'm going to do is, as you see, I have my yarn, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to let one little end hang off, okay? So you can see the top of the loop here, and I'm going to make a knot, okay? See how I do that? I just made a little knot, so I have something that I can hang it on a, a stick. You can make it bigger than mine. Mine might not have been so big, uh, but just something that will hang on a... Uh, on a um, on a stick, and as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna make mine bigger. Okay, here we go. Oops. Okay. All right. There we go. There we go. Okay, just a little something. Okay. There we go. I've got a nice loop. So when I'm hanging it, and I made a short one so we could see it. Uh, I've got, I could stick this on one branch and then I'll make another loop and I could stick it on another branch or I can just leave it like this. It's nice if you can, um, have it from one branch to another and you're going to make another loop at the bottom or if you're hanging it like this you'd make a knot or another loop just to hold it into place okay so you have your yarn your needle I'm going to put my yarn over here and your scissors now what things are you going to put on your garland hmm. so we're going to talk about a couple of different things um, you don't want stuff with lots of salt and, and, and a lot of synthetic stuff in it. That's not necessarily good. But usually Cheerios are probably a nice good one. Um, I have some nice, nice organic Cheerios, and I'm going to get a couple of things here. So I've got a few things. 
popcorn if you want to pop popcorn um don't salt it no butter just leave it as is so that's a fun project to do is that you just um pop some popcorn pop some popcorn if you've got some corn kernels i've got some corn kernels that we're going to do something in a little bit with so popcorn popcorn all right so um i do not have popcorn i was too lazy and i didn't pop my popcorn i'm going to be working with oreos not oreos <laughs> oreos behind me i'm gonna work with cheerios mm, delicious um and cranberries you can also work with raisins um uh, you know other types of like cereals with a little hole might be good that they like just trying to make sure that they're on the i guess the healthier side okay so i've got um here i've got my cheerios and my cranberries as i said you could use raisins or something like that all right it's pretty simple we've all kind of done this so what we're going to do is we're going to take our cranberry and we're going to take our needle or your raisin see how i just pierce that through i stabbed that poor little sucker and i put it on and this is really good for fine motor. And I'm going to slowly push it very, whoop, very gently all the way down. See how I have that? See how I have that? If some people really like, you know, detailed work, this is a great project um, to do. I'm going to do another one. Okay. Watch your fingers. Mine actually is not like a super sharp. I don't know these are I forget what these kinds are of these 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 needles but sometimes you get them plastic with kids kits or something like that or arts kits okay see how I have that and then I'm just gonna slowly very gently where it gets thicker at the needle head the eye of the needle and I'm gonna put that down so as you can start to see I've got a couple of cranberries I'm gonna do one more and who here has done it with like, uh, these are dried cranberries. You could do it with like the regular cranberries. Who's done that for um, Christmas time, uh, stuff like that? You could do it. You could do it, you know, get the real stuff at the store if you want. So now I put on um, an Oreo as well. Uh, not an o Oreo, a Cheerio, okay? So I have a Cheerio. And what I like about Cheerios, I guess you can use Fruit Loops. Uh, I don't know how healthy they are for the birds. But see how I have that? And I have a little garland going, right? And you could do a whole pattern. So if you miss your jewelry and beading classes with Amy or Allison, this is your chance. This is your chance to do this. And it's a lot of fun. It's not too hard. It's hard for some people. I do understand that, you know, the fine motor is a little difficult for some individuals. That's why I said this is a great time that if you're like working together, like I have some people that maybe it's harder to use the needle. So if you're working as a team, maybe somebody can just keep track of the pattern where they can do the design They say, okay, I want one Cheerio, one cranberry, one raisin, one Cheerio, Whatever. Some people, while it may be very difficult to put it on the needle, maybe they can give it to you. Um, and then uh, somebody else who, you know, is a little bit more comfortable with the, the sewing, so to speak, uh, can do that for you. Okay, so it's a great way. Um, it's a great way that maybe some individuals, it's harder for them to do this part, but maybe they can help count. Maybe they can put them in little small bowls. Say, here's 10 Cheerios. Can you put this in the bowl for me so I can put it on the, um, the string? Okay? So there's lots of ways we can work together as a team to do this. And isn't that cute? It's delicious. I may want to wear this. Ooh, my fingers are very sticky. So that's a garland. And as I said, I don't have popcorn um with me which is kind of a bummer um my popcorn that's already made is full of like you know salt and stuff like that you don't want to give them a lot of salt the bird so that's where i'm talking about this research part okay um you know take a look you don't want too much of that stuff too much people food is not that great 
But you know what? A little treat once in a while isn't too bad. So, and it also helps you. Oh, this one I think. It's for me. One for the birds, one for me. All right? So there you go. There's your garland. And when you get to the end, let's say I had this all stacked up. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to make another knot. Okay. Here we go. So now you have it. And you could hang it. You can make it as long or as short as possible. You know, I, I like it like this because sometimes the birds like to jump on it. Um, so there you go. Nice. You can use, as I said, raisins, cranberries, popcorn, and, um, you know, like cereals <clears throat> with little holes in them. All righty? Okay? So that's our garland. Very simple. Very simple what you need. The supplies will go up on Google Classroom. But you can start thinking about right now where in your house. It's as simple as uh, scissors. Got some in my eye. Yarn, some type of needle, something to make a little hole and push it through, okay? Some kind of like that, all right? Now, some of you say, Deborah, I don't like sewing at all. That's really lame. Uh, it's too hard for me. What else can I do? Well, there's something I think kind of s simple we can do, and it might have things in the house um, that you already have. Um, and one of these mixtures, you can put it on toilet paper rolls. Um, you could put it on outside of a jar um, and hang it. We're going to use, we're gonna use a bagel. That's right, I said a bagel, all right? You can also use pine cones. Uh, as I said, you can use, um, I think you can use like pipe cleaners. You can, you can make an apparatus out of pipe cleaners, but we're going to be talking about using a bagel. I'm going to split the bagel in half. I've never used it on a bagel, so we're going to see. I've usually done things like this with an orange. So let's say you were making orange juice or you were squeezing lemons for cooking and you just tell your family, yo, save those orange peels you can use the orange peels to fill it with this with these kinds of mixtures okay um but we're gonna coat a bagel as some of you have seen this with as i said toilet paper rolls and stuff like that if you're using a toilet paper roll or even like a plastic cup you're gonna have to poke i don't even have a plastic cup here or a toilet paper roll handy you're gonna have to poke with the scissor make some holes so you can string some yarn or string to it so it hangs so we are going to use a bagel and i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it in half i'm gonna use each side okay so i get two i know my bagel's very small some of us get bagels on the weekends still a lot of bagel places are open you might have one that was kind of extra and nobody ate it so that's good if it's a little stale that's great that's perfect so today we're going to be using a bagel all right um if you have them, uh, I know if you buy them in the store, I got these are the little Thomases. You can use a to uh, toilet paper roll, paper towel roll, uh, plastic cup, anything like that. Um, a pine cone will work as well. Any of those things, we're gonna just stick it on a bagel, okay? So we've got our, um, I like this, it's a bagel bird snack. So we've got our, our bagel. The staler it is, the better, because it's firmer and it's harder. So um, it's good. It's good to do that. All righty. Hey, Alona, what's up, girl? What's up? Thanks for joining us. All right. What we also like about the bagel is um, it's got a hole in it. So that's going to help us with our yarn. So we've got our bagel or whatever item we're holding it together. We've got some yarn. I'm going to take some yarn. You're going to need yarn or string. Um, and eventually what we're going to do, what we're going to not throw them around. Um, what, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be tying, uh, the bagel to the string. So I'm going to do that first so you can kind of see it before it gets too messy. So you see, I put the yarn through the hole and I'm going to double knot it. Okay. So there we go. That's all you're going to do. If you're using a toilet paper roll, you're going to cut some little holes. 
If you have a hole puncher, that's great. On each side so it can dangle nicely. If you're using a pine cone, you're gonna find a spot and just tie it in between the little tongs there. Okay, the prongs, I guess is what it's called. So there's our bagel and you wanna make sure that you have some string. We'll talk a little bit more about our spring and, and string and how much length. It depends on where you're hanging them. You know, like if, if you know, you probably wanna do at least, like at least a foot or 12 inches, cause you're gonna want some space. You know, it depends on where you're hanging them from and how far you want them to hang down, okay? I wouldn't do it like three feet. I mean, unless you were somehow putting it on a very tall pine tree. I don't even know how you'd get up there. But, you know, at least probably 12, 12 inches or plus, okay? That'll give you enough area to tie it around the bagel, make a loop at the end, and hang it from your tree, okay? So here we go. Now, if you are a lucky person and you have bird seed, Okay, which all my birds and squirrels and chipmunks and deer and bears are eating, that's great. You can use that. You don't even have to mix it yourself. Um, I like a nice little mixture. I think here's some like little millet, some cracked corn, some sunflowers. There's a lot of different stuff in here. A lot of different stuff. So you can use that. You can use that. We're going to make a little bit of our own mixture. Um, a little bit of our own mixture. And I should have gotten a plate. Duh. Oh, I've got one over here. I've got one over here too. There we go. Good. I want to get plates because I want to roll this on. So you should get a little bit of a bowl or a plate. I have a nice clear bowl so you can see. And a spoon. Okay. You might need a knife to cut your bagel. And if you're using regular bird seed, the only other ingredient you're going to need is a butter uh, and what I mean by that is um, peanut butter um, we're gonna actually use sunflower butter nobody in uh, sunflower seed butter nobody in my house likes it so I'm gonna give it to the birds <laughs> this will give you a great chance to clear out all the things that you thought your family would like to eat um, but don't um, so I'm using sunflower butter and I did look it up you can use it Peanut butter's great. Sometimes if you use like regular peanut butter, like Jif or Skippy, which I love, um, it's, um, you, you gotta be a little careful um, because that's filled with a lot of sugar and stuff like that. But you know, if you've got like the real natural stuff, that's good. If you're allergic to it, you can use other things. You can use, um, you can use like a coconut oil um, or like I said, one of the other nut butters. So let's say you're allergic to peanuts, but not sunflower seeds. Try it. You know, if you have it, uh, I can't, I wonder if you could use one of those soy nuts. Some people use that too. Uh, you can use like a Crisco or something, depending on, you know, I, I understand it's hard for some people who have food allergies. And I think you can also use fluff, something sticky, something sticky. So we've got our, our, our butter. We're gonna use, I'm gonna use sunflower uh, seed butter that nobody likes to eat. Spring, signing off puzzle time, fun. Have fun, fine, see you later, see you later. All righty. So um, you can have, if it's just your bird seed and your nut butter or your seed butter, that's fine. We're gonna use a couple of other things as well. So we're gonna make our own cracked corn. I'm gonna show you how to use a coffee grinder to make your own kind of cracked corn. So I have some like old, uh, what do you call it? Kernels from popcorn that I didn't use. So I'm gonna put like about a couple tablespoons in there, right? Just a couple, just a little bit. And I'm gonna crack that because if you use the actual popcorn, like the kernel itself, it's too hard for the little birds, it's too big. So we wanna just kind of crack it open a little bit and it'll give it like a finer paste. So I'll cover your ears. This is great. You can use your, um, your coffee grinders, just clean them up. This is a great way to make a lot of different stuff. It doesn't need too much, hold on. Yeah, there we go. And what we get is a like kind of like um like a little like a little see how it's all chopped up? 
So we can use that. We can use that if you have them. And if you want to use, learn to use different types of appliances that you wouldn't think about. And these are usually pretty safe. They don't go unless they're all plugged in. But have somebody help you if you've never used it before. And make sure your hands are never by a moving blade. The cover has to be on. Everything has to be safe. All right. So we've got, we've got a little bit of our bird seed. But we're making our own kind of bird seed. So we chopped up some corn, made some cracked corn. Um, another thing you can use, some people have it, especially if you bought it and you thought, wow, this is really delicious. Um, quinoa. You can use some quinoa. Uh, and I'm just going to pour a little quinoa in here. Okay. I like it. It's, it's all right. But let's say you bought this and it's just sitting there and you're not using it. Quinoa is a really uh, good source of protein there. They're little, they're small. They do use it in some bird feeds. Um, so I put in a little bit of there, maybe a tablespoon of quinoa. I have very fancy, I have organic corn and quinoa. And another one I've heard, I've heard some people say they don't like it. I believe it's safe, what I've seen, is what about a little flaxseed, right? Maybe a little flaxseed. Flaxseed's really good for, you know, for people. Um, it's good sources of certain types of nutrition. And they're like these little seeds. It's just good to just experiment and see what you have in your house. You know, if you have um, old, um, uh, I like, I have um, purple cone flower and I collect the little pods. You can put them in too. You can put them in too. They have like little pointy seeds. So I have a bunch of different things. So I have some bird seed. Maybe you were running low. I have some cracked corn that I did. I have some quinoa and I have some flax seed. So I have all these like groovy things in here. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I don't know, maybe a couple of tablespoons to get us started on my, uh, if you're using peanut butter or I'm using, um, sunflowers seeds okay sunflower seed uh stuff okay so it's gooey gooey so if you want to wear gloves because you don't like gooey gooey stuff i get it i totally get it all righty so we're gonna pour our cracked corn in with our uh peanut butter or our sunflower seed oil i put some of that in i'm gonna put um some of my quinoa in Another one you can do is you can put um, you can put some rolled oats if you have quick oats. Let's do that too. These birds are getting a better breakfast than I did. Um, put some of that in. Put some of that in. Rolled oats. You don't want to use, um, I guess you could. It might be a treat. But you want to stay away from the high sugary packets. Okay? So that's why I use the plain, boring. Um, you should always have... Uh, some rolled oats, some rolled oats. They last a long time. I always have it. You can give them cooked pasta, from what I understand. That's some of the research I've done. All right. I'm going to put my flax seed in. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. They've got some cool stuff. And you know what? I'm going to put some of the bird seed in too. Okay. So I've got a nice mixture. And I'm going to start to mix this. See how I'm mixing this? Wow. It's like a looks delicious. Uh, you've got like a nice gloppy uh, mixture. Now, how it sticks will depend on what you're putting it. You might have to adjust it, add more peanut butter, add more seeds, things like that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to see if this person was correct. So what we can do is we're going, let's see, we're going to spread the peanut, the, the nut butter or seed butter mixture with the seeds onto our bagel. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Especially in the winter, if you were doing it, I think it sticks and stuff like that. But definitely you could, you could do this either way. You can, or if you're worried, you really want it to stick, you can, you can chill it for a bit. Cause when it's, especially in the summer, it might be a little gloppy. All right. So what we're doing is we're following other steps. We're using safety with our appliances. We're learning to use different things in our kitchen to build our interests, right? So here we go. Maybe you work at Home Depot 
or Lowe's. That's where I was this weekend. They've got a whole department on bird, uh, bird accessories and bird feeders. So that's a cool thing too. So you may wanna try this. So what you're going to do is it's very gloppy. You're gonna try to fill this not sticking, so I might need more nut butter. Okay, there you go. And you're gonna cover your bagel, your pine cone if you were using that, or your uh, toilet you paper doing? roll. Okay, we're making bird feeders. Did you have your conference? Yeah. Okay, good, it's school time. So see how I did that? You're just gonna cover that on, you're gonna push it on. the bird feeder. Well, there's and always squirrels. All right, good, Simon, but you're not getting a bigger allowance. Sorry, dude. So we're just sticking that on there. Very, very, very gooey, right? When it's all covered, you're gonna take your string and you're gonna make that other knot we talked about, okay? Working on our fine motor skills, fine motor skills, all right? So let's do our other one, right? I really do recommend to tie the string before you cover it. Because when it's all covered, whether whatever you're using, it's going to be a nightmare, all right, to, um, to, to do that, okay? So once again, we're working with stale bagels, so we're working with the environment, saving stuff in our landfills, thinking outside the box, thinking of different things that we can use to make our world a better place, right? So here we go, working on tying skills. We want those double knots there, if we can, or ask for help, ask for help, okay? So once again, I'm gonna show you again, here is our bagel, okay? With our string, we've got our gloppy glop, which was made with, I use sunflower seed. Let me know, anybody, I guess you could use cashew butter or almond butter. You know, like I said, I go out and I buy these different butters and nobody in my household wants to eat them and then they sit there. So this is a great way to, you know, before it's too expired, uh, go out, clean your, clean your refrigerator out. Um, and then you can benefit some of the animals and you can learn about, you know, building hobbies, building interests, doing your research on this. So once again, I had that gloppy stuff that we used our coffee bean grinder, right? That's how I make facial masks too, just so you know. I um, I use, I, I grind um, oatmeal, oatmeal in it. It's great, Take for rosacea, it takes, takes redness right out. So see how I have that? You're gonna do two, whoop. So if, you're, if it's having a hard time sticking, what I recommend is you add more uh, of your nut butter, okay? All right, so we've got our two. We've got our two, okay? And you can use a jar too. Sometimes if you use a jar up on a, like a tree stump or something like that, you can cover the jar with it on the outside and they'll come over and they'll peck at it and eat it too. So there's all different ways that you can do this. I'm almost tempted to eat it. Mmm. <coughs> So we worked on making, using things around our house, using our hand skills to make different ways to reach out and you know enjoy our bird friends, right? So we have our garland that we made. You can even do it like as a bracelet or a necklace too. Just don't put it on you and you're walking around and you know birds might be flying on your, your head unless that's what you want to do, which I don't recommend. But you could tie it like, um, you could tie the two ends together so if that's easier for you to stick them onto the tree branches uh, for you, okay? So that's another way to, to do that. Uh, and then your, um, like I said, you could use toilet paper rolls. We used, um, we used bagels, old bagels. Old bagels are fresh, you know, whatever you have, okay? Pine cones will work. All righty. So let's talk um, as we, we do this. So... We have our bird feeders made out. We're gonna hang them on our trees or in places that we want to attract birds. Maybe you have a wooded area, maybe you have a garden or something like that and you don't you wanna enjoy and bring um, more birds into there. So you can use this for that. Um, the other thing that I want us to discuss, to discuss 
before we go is why I wanted you to get your nature uh, journal out. Your nature journal. Yeah. Come on. So we're, we're practicing a lot of cool skills here. We're working on handwriting. We're working on fine motor and drawing. We're working on organization skills. You know what I mean? Like we're and planning skills, which is wonderful, right? So I just picked it for science as we were talking about. So here was one of my science experiments about respiration of plants. Here was when I went out and we were talking about natural studies of our plants. Um, this one, I have my bird list, okay? So we're gonna just go over some of the birds and what we can do. So you can print this out or you can write it down with help or with by yourself if you are perfectly capable. Wonderful. So we're gonna talk about our bird checklist, okay? As we said, you can go to the store, you can order on Amazon, you can go to the library when all this, you can buy books that'll explain and identify different birds because they're all very unique. But you know what? You can go right on your computer, right there. Google is an amazing thing and you can find your own bird checklist. Now, you wanna be careful, you don't wanna go to ones in, um, well you could, but birds, differ. The kinds of birds are um, sometimes vary depending on where you are in the world. So you might want to put North America, you might want to put New Jersey, and you could put backyard, uh, you could do birds, checklist, printable, all those things, and you will get one of these. Now, National uh, Wildlife Federation is cool because they have them right there and you can print it out. So, these are some of the birds that you might expect to see nibbling on your garland or on your uh, groovy bagel bird feeder that you made uh, either with your bird seed or from scratch using your appliances around your house. The American crow. Yeah, you might get him. Sometimes people don't like them. They can be a little mean, I think. And they usually come in, in groups. What is it, a murder? Is a group of crows? Is that what it is? American goldfinches. Now, certain um, birds like certain foods. So if you notice that you use different bird seed, because you can go to CVS, you can go to the pet store, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can pick up certain food, certain bird seed brands uh, or kinds or mixes will attract different birds. All right, the goldfinch, right? Uh, they're beautiful. They, they're kind of like a little bit of gold and, and black. And what I love about this one is it gives you a picture too. It gives you a picture of each one. Most of you know what a robin looks like. I'm guessing, maybe not. So this is where you're going to rack your ring. Need to keep away from the squirrels. That is, yeah, I've tried different things, uh, Stephen's family, to keep them out. Um, there's guards you can make for your bird feeders or you can buy them. I've sprayed them with cooking oil, put like <laughs> canola oil on them, hoping that maybe the squirrel will slip off. Um, yeah, they eventually, those squirrels are pretty ingenious. They are pretty ingenious. But you know what? Sometimes they recommend that you give a separate feeder, a different type of feeder, or you make sure you have enough food for the squirrels too. I think they're hogs, they'll always come back. And those chipmunks fill those cheeks. They're just as much fun to watch as the birds. So it depends on what you really want to do. If you don't mind your squirrels getting some of your bird seed, they're amazing. They're acrobats. They are incredibly talented and gifted and smart, those squirrels. And the chipmunks are just so cute and they just keep piling in and they walk away. So you're going to see lots of different wildlife. We, the one we don't want is when Jamie was talking about the bears. Uh, the bears is a little concerning. I, I, I do understand that. That might be a bit of a challenge. Um, this is more of what we would call, fancy word, this is more like a suet. I mean, the suet is a, a type of um, feed or um, preparation of food that deals with like a fat. Usually it's like an animal fat and it, and it sticks together and it gets hard and you put it in special, they're like little, they're like little uh, wire boxes and you can hang them too. So you could do something like this. Like I said, you could put it into, um, you can get pipe cleaners and you could put it in there. You could leave it in a little bowl. You can roll it up in a bowl 
and leave it out and they'll they'll enjoy it they'll enjoy it either way but it's fun to experiment to make your own bird feed uh with that uh black cat chickadee they're really cute i like all the little ones um you might see a blue jay watch out for blue jays watch out for their nests they can get nasty if they think you're gonna mess with their babies they can so they're they're tough birds blue jays um but we all have seen the blue jays um, woodpeckers, right? Downy woodpeckers. They're a little bit smaller than the other woodpeckers. Um, woodpeckers are, um, they like to make a lot of noise. Um, but hey, that's what they're looking for, bugs and things, uh, in, in trees and, and what have you. Um, let's see, a house sparrow. We get lots of little house sparrows and different types of finches and things like that. So they're the little cute guys and there's different different kinds there. Morning doves, morning doves. They they're like they look like pigeons, right? They um they make their nests. They don't make the best nests. They are not very stable. They're usually too low um in tree branches and a lot of times they fall out of a tree. So be kind to them, but they seem to congregate in large numbers sometimes and they make that coo coo sound. It's another thing that you can learn about birds, the sounds that they make. Um, and sometimes the sounds that you think are birds are actually other animals like chipmunks and things like that. Uh, the cardinal, my favorite, right? So some birds you're going to see, if you have peanuts at uh, home, cardinals, blue jays, titmouse, woodpeckers will eat them. Yeah, they love those stuff. Sometimes when I have extra, the um, I like to give them the peanuts in the shells and I like to see the little animals, kind of chipmunks and squirrels take them too. But yeah, peanuts... You know, if you had a party and you don't want to eat all the peanuts or you want to share a little bit of your peanuts or maybe some fell on the floor, take them up, give them to the birds, you know, do that kind of stuff. Yeah, but you can put in peanuts too. Yeah, delish, delish for those birds. But the cardinal. So you'll notice that when you're looking at this checklist, you're going to start to do your research and start to see that some birds, the boy birds, look different than the girl birds and cardinals are definitely one of those blue jays i believe they look the same um goldfinches i think they look a little different and um cardinals look different the girls um are more brown with a little bit of red and the and the boys are a bright red um so that's always cool too when you're learning about this red winged blackbird i don't get any around here uh, but they're really cool too uh, they're black and then they have a little bit of red and I think yellow on, on, on their, like their, their wing and the tufted titmouse. Very, very cute. Very, very cute birds. You might also get just in your neighborhood, wild turkeys. I've never seen them come up to my, uh, bird feeders. Uh, they don't, but they, they can be a little nasty. Um, you might get ducks or mallards, right? Different kinds of ducks or the uh, Canada geese or Canadian geese as some of us call them. If you're a little bit more by water or something like that. Uh, well, it actually doesn't matter. They're, they usually go in larger spots where they can kind of hang out and they make a big mess. Um, and then if you have any waterways, you might get some really cool stuff looking around maybe when you're walking around a park or as things open up look i have a snowy egret that flies right by my house all the time every year be careful there are hawks there are turkey vultures there's all different types of birds as well there are what we call predators so this is where you're learning these little guys that we feed they're really cute but sometimes what happens watch out hawks are bigger usually bigger birds they might come in and they might get a little friend. They have to eat too. They have to eat too. So don't be too upset if you ever see that. Um, that's part of nature. And that's something that we need to uh, learn and deal with. So, um, but what I'm hoping that this leads us to our discussion is to gather up all these, these skills that we're working on to create yet another interest in our lives and who knows maybe it's something that you you know go to wild birds unlimited in paramus maybe you want to get a job at a pet store and you'll have this information maybe you want to work at home or lowe's and you'll have more information to help customers 
in what to do and what to buy. There's a whole area of these items. So I think this is a lot of fun. Look around your house, look at things that you might have. You don't need a lot, it's just a little bit to cover one of a pine cone, a bagel, a toilet paper roll, a jar, a glass that you can leave out. Some, hopefully not glass so it doesn't break, but plastic works really well. Um, make your garland and see what kind of birds might come to see you. And that's why you have your nature journal. You can either use this, check them off, put the date when you fed them, fold it and put it in your, your notebook. Uh, I just printed out a smaller one. Maybe you're going to keep a list. Maybe you're going to keep a list of the date and all the birds that ate your bird seed. And you should write a list of what you used and you can make your own different varieties. You might see that nobody eats flaxseed, right? Everybody preferred the peanut butter over the sunflower seed. So you can do all types of experiments. So I wanna thank everybody for joining me today for our science, get our morning straight, get us going. We're learning about the world around us, learning to increase our interests. We'll be back at 12.30 for Lunch Bunch. Lunch Bunch will be on, I believe, Zoom and Facebook Live. We'll have a special guest. We'll have a special guest and, um, and then 1.30 with me is a short class. Um, you should have gotten the email. Let's talk about food. That's what we're gonna be talking about there. We might have a special guest for that as well. And then 2.30, as usual, is uh, music with Tony. So I really wanna thank all my science lovers out there. Get outside, get out there, look at the birds, look at nature all around you. You will find it will help your mind grow and keep a positive mood. So look for Google Classroom for the information as well or our Facebook page. Everyone, I will see you later. Bye.